it's um, flat to the floor. Don't let them invert or externally, internally or externally rotate their leg, okay? You need the malleoli and everything to be exactly at that zero. As a start, yeah. What is that? Oh, the um, when you put the leg over there. Wow. Yeah, so actually like that does stabilize it. it. Yep, that is a neat, I haven't thought of that in years, but yeah. So if you put the person <laughs> in that position. So what I was struggling with, I'm like, go that way, Kyle. And then as soon as I let go, he's grunting. <laughs> go that way, Kyle. Nope, he's going in. <laughs> so Dr. Christella says, do this. And now his body wants to go out the way I'm trying to get him to go, right? So, all right, good. Axis of movement, again, the two malleoli, I'm going to imagine a line between the two, okay? They're not, they're not parallel with each other. If you've noticed from last time, they're a little offset. So I have to look at that line, and I'm going to put my dot right in the center. This is a procedure that if you're doing it on, on patients, you're going to want to maybe mark that with like a little pen or a marker so you know exactly where that spot is, okay? That is going to be where your axis goes over, okay? The proximal arm or um, stationary arm, <clears throat> what you're going to do is <clears throat> try not to get caught up in the gastrox. Try to look at the posterior lower leg and just try to imagine where the very center of that is, okay? And so what I sometimes do is I kind of frame it with my hands to kind of really tune into where is the exact center of that. And once I've kind of identified that line, I can mark with a marker, that line. I do the exact same thing with the calcaneus. The moving arm, the distal arm, is the posterior calcaneus, midline of the posterior calcaneus. So again, I'm gonna outline and shape just the calcaneus, and once again, try to, to create a line there, and I might want to actually put a line on a person if I was doing this clinically, okay? Find my axis, line up my line that I drew on the person with the back of this goniometer, and now just the rear foot, just the calcaneus, and what you want to be careful, the book even says, is try not to let too much of the whole foot come. We're just interested in what does, does the calcaneus move that once the rest of the foot starts to go with it, that's about all the motion he's got. And then what I'm going to do is I have to bisect the two, and then I'll get my number from zero okay I do the same thing for eversion except now I'm just going to evert the calcaneus not as far same exact alignment okay so I get my axis I put my line I've got midline and then I'm going to evert the foot and again get my number about 10 degrees or so for that way people been asking